Well, hello. Uh, let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Uh, the second last time for 2020, uh, as we come to the last chapter of Matthew's Gospel and the great and glorious uh, truth and news of Jesus' resurrection. So let's pray and seek uh, God's guidance and help as we come to his word. Lord God, thank you for your word. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you that he lived uh, f uh, lived a life of perfect obedience to you. Lived the life we failed to live. And thank you that he died the death we deserve to die. Died upon a cross for our sins. And Lord, we thank you that he rose from the grave, victorious over sin and death, to secure for us the hope of eternal life. And as we reflect on your word and the, and the account of Jesus' resurrection today, guide us, strengthen us, encourage us, comfort us uh, with the good news, the glorious news of Jesus, our risen King. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Well, here we go. So Matthew 28, um, and we're going to read verses 1 to 15. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and, and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report goes to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Well, uh, the glorious news of Jesus' resurrection. Uh, so what are we meant to reflect on when we, when we read this passage? What are we meant to understand? And there's, there's so much we could go into. So I'm going to touch on a, on a couple of things uh, that I think... Uh, will help us uh, today. Uh, and the first is the trustworthiness of the Gospels once more. I mean, here we have this astounding moment in, in all of history. And who uh, does God decide to be the first witnesses? To women. Now, for 21st century Australia, this wouldn't start, this shouldn't startle us uh, in, in a country that seeks uh, equality. Uh, um, between men and women. Uh, but in the first century, in, in, a, in a Roman colony, um, that was not the case. In fact, women uh, were very much second-rate citizens in, in a lot of ways, and, and one of the primary ways that that was expressed was their testimony in a court of law was not valid or not accepted. And so for the gospel writers... To have women be the first witnesses to the empty tomb and to the risen Jesus is truly astounding. In other words, if they were going, if they were making this up in order to try and convince people of something that didn't happen, they wouldn't have chosen women uh, to be the first witnesses. And so the only 
logical explanation as to why the gospel writers included women at this point as the first witnesses is that it actually happened. That this is what happened. And here we have uh, this scene, a, a, a violent earthquake and an angel comes down and, and the soldiers pass out and, and the stone is rolled away. Let me ask you a question. Why was the stone rolled away? I think in, in many minds, for, for people who are at least somewhat familiar with the story, they think it's because, uh, they think it's so that Jesus could get out. But that's not the case. We've just read, right? Jesus has already left the tomb. So why was the stone rolled away? It's so that the women could look in and see that it's empty. It's so that you and I, in effect, through them, can look into the tomb and see that it's empty. The stone was rolled away, not for Jesus, but for you and me, so that we could know the truth of the resurrection. And then the angel appears to the women uh, and says, don't be afraid. Uh, I know you're looking for Jesus. He was crucified. And that's the same as saying he was dead, but he is not here. And three of the most beautiful words ever spoken. He has risen. He has conquered the grave. Right? And this, this truth is the linchpin of the Christian faith. The Apostle Paul uh, says as much when, in, when he writes to the church in Corinth. And you can go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he's reminding uh, the, the, the believers in Corinth of the gospel, of the truth of the gospel. And it seems that uh, people in Corinth have started to doubt the reality of the resurrection. And Paul says to them, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then our faith is futile. It's useless. Right? It, it's, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, he was a liar. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then what he said about the cross did nothing. But Jesus did rise from the dead. It is the linchpin of our faith. And because he rose from the dead, we can know that uh, what Jesus said about who he is, is true. That he is indeed the Son of God come down. That because he rose from the dead, we can indeed know that what Jesus said he would do and achieve by dying on the cross happened. That he died for our sin once and for all to reconcile us to God. You see that Jesus rose from the dead is at the heart of the Christian faith because it says that Jesus is the King of Kings, is the Lord of Lords. He is our Savior. He is the one who conquered the grave so that we can follow and have the assurance and the hope of everlasting life with him. Now, it seems uh, that as uh, the disciples, uh, sorry, as the women hurry away, uh, they suddenly meet Jesus. Uh, and what's really interesting about this account is what they did. For it says that they clasped his feet and worshipped him. Now let's remember something about uh, Jesus and his disciples. They were first century Jews. What did Jews believe? That there was only one true God, maker of heaven and earth. And you should not worship anyone but him. And here you have the women falling at the feet of Jesus and worshipping him. And what does Jesus do? Well, actually, it's more a point of what he doesn't do. He doesn't say to the women, no, stop doing that. You shouldn't worship me. We only worship the one true God, remember? That's not what he says. He says to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that I have risen and that they will see me. In other words, Jesus accepts the worship that the women give him. And what does that tell us about who he is? That he is indeed God incarnate. That he is, as we celebrate Christmas, our Emmanuel, God with us. 
Now, we have this interesting account uh, in the next little section, verses 11 to 15, that while the women were on their way, guards go into the city, report to the chief priests, and the chief priests are worried. And so they pay off the guards, we're told, uh, to concoct a bit of a, a conspiracy theory story about how the disciples stole the body. And there's two things to say about this. One, uh, this, this story has been propagated throughout the history uh, uh, since this moment. Um, there's a sense in which the chief priests have a sense of just how important this moment is and, and, and how it can impact their world, how it will literally change the world. They have a, a, a sense of that, and so they feel the need to cover it up. And much of uh, world history since this moment uh, there's, that's been the challenge for the church. Uh, governments or culture seems to try to cover up the good news, to cover up the truth. And for whatever reason, they come up with stories such as, no, the disciples stole the body. <laughs> well, they try to explain it away. But as for this uh, little conspiracy theory, it doesn't make any sense. And here's why. Because here you have a bunch of men, Jesus' disciples, the apostles, who on the night that he was betrayed, before he went to the cross, what did they do? They ran scared for their lives. They went into hiding. And then, a few days later, something happened that changed them in the most profound way. Because a short while later, what will they do? They will go into Jerusalem. And they will proclaim to the crowds that are gathered there that Jesus is risen. And what has history taught us? That, that, that for that message, to bring that message, they paid the ultimate price. They paid, they paid it with their lives. Now, if, if it's a conspiracy, if they really did steal the body and concocted this this story and, and these lies to try and convince people to form some sort of new religion, if you like. And that they then died for the lie that they made. Would you die for a lie that you know you created? It strains logic. It, it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense because that is not what happened. Jesus rose from the dead. And the disciples met the risen Jesus and then wanted to tell the world. And that's what we're going to reflect on uh, in the next uh, and final reflection for 2020. So why don't we pray and thank God for the risen Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that Jesus is our risen King. That he went through death and came out the other side so that we can follow that by trusting in him, we know that our sins are forgiven because he died on the cross for them. And we know that we have everlasting life for he defeated death and conquered the grave. And Lord, what a hope we have in Jesus. Uh, help us to contemplate and reflect on this hope each and every day of our lives, that it may shape our lives so that we may love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and love our neighbour as ourself and live lives that bring honour and glory to the name of Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Well, have a good day.